Lee Delsing spent 25 years on the PGA Tour and is a lifetime member of the PGA Tour and PGA of America. Now he provides his unique perspective as a golfer and network broadcaster. It's time to go On the Range with Jay Delsing. On the Range is brought to you by the Gateway Section of the PGA. Good morning. This is Golf with Jay Delsing. Pearlie, what's up? Good morning this morning. Chopping wood, carrying water. Ready to roll. Chopping wood, carry water. Mate, what does that mean? You guys wouldn't know what that means. That means work. I know. That means work. You guys have no idea what that means. I'll explain it to you off the air. Here we go. The show's for a minute like a round of golf. This first segment is called the On the Range segment. And the On the Range segment is brought to you by the Gateway section of the PGA right here in St. Louis. And um, that section is compiled of 300 men and women that are helping to make our golf experience better. So we had a great day with those folks today, working on our short game a little bit. So uh, we really appreciate them being part of the show. Pearlie, our social media outlets, we don't have any time. No time. Uh, the Zuckerberg Report will have to wait for next week. He's getting his comeuppance. Oh, ooh, ooh, it doesn't sound good for Zuck. <laughs> and... Uh, uh, we want to thank Bob and Kathy Donahue as they help us sponsor the show each week at Donahue Painting and Refinishing, 314-805-2132. They do spectacular work on the inside of your house, on the outside of your house, anything you need. These are the people to call, Bob and Kathy. All right, so Pearl, I got a really interesting interview with John Lester, really one of my favorites. You know what a baseball geek I am, but talking about and, and making the transition to talk a little bit about golf and baseball and pitching and the mental side. And I love the mental side of it. It's really fun. Well, I think you're enamored with him as a lot of people are. I know I am because he, he's such a competitor. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I don't know if you want to talk about it now, maybe later on, but who was talking about, we should talk about some of the best competitors we've ever run into. You know, maybe names we never heard of, uh, people never heard of. Maybe when we were kids, who was that one kid on the block? Right. That kind of stuff. Because he seems like that one kid on the block that even then probably intimidated everybody a little bit. Yeah, it's kind of like you you get your, your teeth sunk into something and you just won't <laughs> let go, you know. Um, yeah, let's talk about that a little bit on the, on the back end. I, what I really want to get to. I'm really excited about. Earlier this week on Wednesday, there was a check presentation made by Nick Ragone, Steve Spratt, in the Ascension Charity Classic team. And are you ready for these numbers? Two hundred thousand dollars to each of the of the three North County charities: Mary Grove, Boys and Girls Club of St. Louis, and Urban League. So that's six hundred thousand. And then $30,000 each to PGA Reach and the first tee of St. Louis. Wow. And a total of give or take a little more than $800,000 was raised this year in the inaugural event. That's fantastic. Was there a goal kind of behind the scenes that they were talking about? Or you know, we're we just really going to see what they come up with for yeah, year Yeah, we really one? didn't have anything to, um, uh, to judge that by, um, at least when I was around. So, gosh, when uh, this... We started putting this thing together. I was, I was like, man, I wonder how much, you know, we can make. But oh man, I'm just uh, delighted to be a part of that. That's a huge deal, yeah. Uh, especially year one. Who knows where that's going to go? Yeah. So hey, Pearl. This week, earlier this week on Tuesday, I did this little thing called Teachers Teaching Teachers, uh, and the Gateway section. Dan Politis was kind enough. Ed Schwent was. T- iconic guy in the, in the section that's a, a teacher of the game asked me to come over and talk to, uh, I don't know, 15 or 20 of the local teachers and stuff. And we worked on the short game and it was a blast. These guys, first of all, are gracious and s- their hearts are in such great spots. I mean, they care so much about this and and, and trying to learn different ways of helping people with their games. And um, it was just awesome. So what did you feel you brought to the table? Is that some new information for them? Did you see kind of in their eyes that, oh, man, I haven't really, I don't teach this necessarily? Because the stuff you're at is different. I've, I'm a pretty good chipper, but I you had to teach me this whole other method to kind of take it to the next level. Yeah. Is that what you were talking about? Yeah, I, I gave him the full Monty and, and told him, you know, this is for more of an advanced guy. I'm not sure... Uh, 15 handicapper or so can handle something like this, but, you know, it's it's just spectacular. And I was telling them, I said, guys, 95, 97% of this you can verify on YouTube, on the internet, and things like that. I said, there's 3 to 5% that it's like magic dust. It makes zero sense to me in my feel that some of these, the, this path and club face thing work, and it works like magic. 
Well, the best players do it, and it's that it's that finding that bottom, and especially with you guys in the tour, you normally play a whole lot tighter lies around. And if you don't use this method, you really can't use the weekenders country club method. If you plan on shipping it on the greens on the tour, because yeah. it's not going to stay on the greens. No, I mean, and that's one of the things, Pearl. When I think one of the first things you noted years and years ago when you first came out and caddied on the tour, you're like, I didn't realize how hard and fast the greens were. And that just ex- accentuates how precise and good you need to be with your, with your uh, landing spot, your trajectory, and your spin. Yes, I agree with that on the greens, but I'm saying when you're where, where your ball's lying, yeah. how firm and how short that grass is. You know the old I couldn't get under it. No, no, you're not going to get under it. It's really not the way it, it works out there. Right, it's interesting. So some of, that was some of the questions, and I said I'd much rather have that super super tight lie because I'm going to clip the heck out of that ball, and I can see everybody kind of get a little anxious. It makes my hands sweat even when you just talk about. Wasn't that. always like that though. Somebody, <laughs> I used to get those lies, and my hands would sweat, and I'd have a club in it. But. Um, um, I need to give the tip of the cap segment today, and the tip of the cap is going right to these guys that I was with today, Dan Politis and Ed Schwent and the golf instructor. The the tip of the cap is brought to you by the Dean Team of Kirkwood, 314-966-0303. That's Colin Burton, his team over there. I just want to thank those golf instructors, the teachers, the teaching professionals who are who their job is to help. They eat these hooks and slices for lunch, and they're trying to fix it. And it's, it's you know, there's some tops and shanks. It's just tough, tough, tough to do. And um, the other thing that I realized today, and we talked about a little bit, is how when you're a teaching pro, John, you need to be able to say the same thing in so many different ways because our brains interpret the information in such a way that you and I can hear the same sentence and go opposite directions with where where we think it was meant to take us. Well, and be patient and understanding and thoughtful. There's a lot of that kind of stuff. Yep. So the game needs and thanks all these guys. Love the the day that we had today out at Old Hickory, or I mean last uh, Tuesday at Old Hickory. And I want to thank the Dean team of Kirkwood, uh, specifically Colin, right-hand person, Brandy out there, 314-966-0303. That was the tip of the cap. Don't go anywhere. We have John Lester on the front nine. Golf with Jay Delsing. This is Paul Lazinger, and you're listening to Golf with Jay Delsing. I want to thank the Gateway section of the PGA of America for supporting the Golf with Jay Delsing show. Um, There are over 300 men and women PGA professionals in over 100 golf facilities in the greater St. Louis area supporting us. They're experts in the game. They know the business of the golf of golf. And at this point in time, this pandemic, the golf courses are jammed. These folks are working 10, 12 hour days and just doing great stuff and really appreciate them. Every time you pull up to a public course or a private course, a driving range, there's a really good chance by it that that facility is run by a member of our section. Some of the examples of the programs that are run by these PGA professionals and the Gateway PGA section include PGA Reach, Drive, Chip, and Putt, PGA Hope, and the PGA Junior League. To learn more about the Gateway PGA, go to gatewaypga.org. To find a local PGA professional coach for your next session, go to pga.com. The PGA Growing this game we love. Marcon Appliance Parts Company needs to recognize the sponsors, staff, and volunteers who made the inaugural Ascension Charity Classic in St. Louis a huge success. Without the tireless effort of hundreds of dedicated people this past year, this PGA Champions Tour event could not have achieved the success it did. The winner in golf is the person with the lowest score. But the big winner of this event is the people and communities of need in the St. Louis area and the tremendous boost to the St. Louis economy as a whole. Well played by everyone who put in the time to make this a wonderful event. It's great to live in your community. Marcon Appliance Parts Company is based in St. Louis, Missouri and is the largest distributor of major appliance parts in North America and a proud distributor of General Electric Parts. I am delighted to welcome Marie DeVilla to the Golf with Jay Delsing show. I'm sure you know where it is, but in case you don't, Marie de Villa is a landmark out in West St. Louis County. It's located on the corner of Clayton and Weidman Roads. It's also on 21 beautiful rolling acres right on the way out to Queenie Park. It's a country club-like atmosphere. It's iconic, and it's absolutely gorgeous. When my dad died and my mom decided she didn't want to live alone, Marie de Villa was the first place we called. When we pulled up, we were greeted at the front door by the owner. 
and he took us around on a tour of the facility. We learned that there are one, two, and three-bedroom villas that you can live in, and there's also 24-hour care in the East, West, and the Waterford buildings. So Marie de Villa had everything that my mom wanted. One of the things that stood out in my mind as well was the way the family-owned business treats their guests. That's right. They refer to them as guests, but they treat them like family. So if you're in the process of trying to make a tough decision for this next part of life, you got to visit Marie de Villa. This is local. This is family. And this is St. Louis. This is Marie de Villa. Come be our guest. Thank you, St. Louis, for making the first annual Ascension Charity Classic presented by Emerson a record-breaking success. The golf was incredible, your enthusiasm unmatched, and the only thing that will last longer than the memories is the impact you've made on North St. Louis County charities. To our sponsors, volunteers, and fans, thank you for welcoming golf's greatest legends and bringing professional golf back to St. Louis with record attendance. See you next year at the Ascension Charity Classic. When things come out of left field, having a game plan matters. Farmers Insurance has over 90 years of experience helping people play through every stage of the game. We've seen almost everything, so we know how to cover almost anything. Talk to Farmers Agent Ed Fogelbach at 314-398-0101 to see how they can help you stay in the game. That's Ed Fogelbach at 314-398-0101. We are farmers. Bum, 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 bum. Hi, Jay Delsing here for SSM Health Physical Therapy. Our golf program has the same screening techniques and technology as the pros on the PGA Tour use. That's right. SSM Health Physical Therapy has TPI, Titleist Performance Institute, trained physical therapists that can perform the TPI screen on you, as well as use the KVEST 3D motion capture system. It is awesome. Proper posture and alignment can help you Keep it right down the middle. There's 80 locations in the St. Louis area. Call them at 800-518-1626 or visit them on the web at SSMPhysicalTherapy.com. Your therapy, our passion. One thing I've learned over the years is that many people don't realize that standard insurance policies aren't robust enough to handle their accomplished lifestyles. Ensuring your personal success adequately That's serious business. At Powers Insurance, they don't believe in treating clients like policyholders. They treat them like friends and family. Tim Davis at Powers Insurance can offer more than a policy. He has the knowledge and experience to properly protect your busy lifestyle. Call Tim Davis at Powers Insurance today, 314-333-4913, or find them online. Visit their website at powersinsurance.com. Grab your clubs. We're headed to the front nine on Golf with Jay Delsing. The front nine is brought to you by the Ascension Charity Classic. Hey, welcome back. This is Golf with Jay Delsing. I'm your host, Jay. I got Pearly with me, and we are headed to the front nine, which is brought to you by the Ascension Charity Classic. Man, what a cool week. Just announced over $800,000 raised in our inaugural year, and I can't wait to try to do it again next year and help those guys out. So, PJ Tour Golf here in St. Louis Pro for at least another three years, and Ascension is our guy. That's fantastic. Those guys are pretty competitive, and you are too. So my guess is they're going to want to up that uh, that charity number every year would be my guess. Yeah, I think so for sure. All right, so let's just go right to this John Lester interview. Three-time World Series champion, five-time All-Star, big game pitcher, Mike Maddox, who's a buddy. We play golf together, described him as a warrior. So let's enjoy this interview. Strikeout starts the second, and Molina wheels his way out of there. As Carpenter strikes out, and that's four on the night for John Lester. And Lester's finished, and they'll let him hear it here at Fenway. John Lester is brought to you by Golden Tee. Oh, my gosh, John. So you came to the Cardinals this year, and I said to um, your pitching coach, Mike Maddox, I'm like, oh, man, now I'm going to have to root for John Lester. I've I've really not liked this guy for so long because he won the World Series with the Red Sox against the Cardinals. He won uh, for the Cubs, and, and they're kind of our rivals. And, and he said something that is so cool. He goes, yeah, a lot of people don't like him, but he is an absolute warrior. I mean, it, uh, how was, how did you like your time here in St. Louis? 
Oh, it was great. Um, you know, obviously, you know, kind of the same feelings you had towards the only reverse towards the Cardinals for so many years, just, you know, going to battle against those guys for so long. Um, you know, you have kind of that, that hate, uh, respect relationship, you know, with, with those guys. So to be able to come over and, and, and when you're on the other side and that goes for any organization, you always kind of wonder, especially organizations that are good for so long, um, you know, how they do it. Is it something different? Is it like a trick or, you know, whatever they, whatever they do. So to be able to come over and see how, uh, this awesome organization was run, you know, starting from the training staff all the way up, um, you know, to the front office and obviously the players was pretty cool. Um, you know, opened my eyes a lot. The guys are awesome to get to know those guys. And, you know, like I said, you compete against them. So you have, you know, that, that kind of that barrier or whatever, when you come in, um, to the clubhouse against these guys, but everybody's great, very welcoming. Um, you know, like I said, awesome, awesome organization to be a part of. Take us back to the way you grew up. I'm always fascinated to see guys. I, I'm sure you're going to be a Hall of Famer. I hope you're going to be a Hall of Famer. But to think of you as a kid, you know, um, take us back to that because I'm sure you watch your boys and your daughter and you start thinking, God, it, it, I'm not that old that I can remember having those kind of dreams and hopes and desires. Yeah, I mean, I grew up, I think, just like, really anybody else. Um, you know, I, I grew up playing a lot of sports, um, you know, and, and being in the Northwest, I think that helped me because, you know, you can't play baseball year round. So I had other interests and, and I actually enjoyed playing basketball more than I did playing baseball, um, as I got older, but, you know, baseball obviously kind of chose me and, and moved me in that direction. But I mean, I grew up, like you said, I grew up in the Northwest. I grew up you know, with three, three of probably the better players of my generation with Randy Johnson, King Griffey Jr. And then, you know, Edgar Martinez now with the DH and, and, you know, getting into the hall of fame and all that stuff. So I grew up watching those guys, um, and, and really, you know, loved playing baseball. Like I said, I played soccer, I played basketball, I played a little golf as a kid. Um, but yeah, I mean, just always moving, always running around. I was an only child. So, you know, my parents let me really do whatever I wanted when it came to sports and, and, you know, two practices a night, um, you know, go from a basketball game to a soccer game to a baseball practice or, you know, just stuff like that, being busy, being a kid, um, riding bikes, doing stuff like that. I think just kind of a normal, a normal childhood, um, you know, growing up up there and, and getting to enjoy, you know, like I said, being a kid and playing a lot of sports. You know, John, nowadays, because I'm a hell of a lot older than you, my kids have gone through the sports, and they're making – because I grew up kind of the same way you did. when it, Living in St. Louis, when the weather got cold, we didn't play golf. We were playing football, and we were yeah. playing soccer. And then inside, we played basketball, and I played high school basketball. And they're just not letting kids do that much these days. And I had Jack Nicholas on the show a couple of weeks ago, and he said it's one of the worst things – in his opinion, you could do for young athletes. Yeah, I I agree. I mean, you're you're trying to, you know, just like with your kids in in school and and as a person, you're trying to raise the most well-rounded person you can, right? So I I feel like if your kids want to play sports, you try to raise the most well-rounded athlete you can. And, you know, like I'm trying to convince my oldest to play basketball and he doesn't want to play basketball. And that's fine. Like I gave him or we're giving him the choice to do it and he's making the decision and he wanted to play fall baseball. So we're into fall baseball. Um, but I think you need to raise, you know, if your kids are into sports, you need to raise athletes. You don't need to raise a baseball player um, or a golfer, or, you know, whatever. Cause I feel like at 11 years old um, or even eight years old where my two boys are at, they can get burnt out with this stuff. And, you know, like you don't want to get burnt out when you're in high school, you know, and you do have an opportunity to maybe go play basketball or soccer or somewhere. And you're like, I don't really want to do that because I'm, I'm tired of it. Um, you know, so I feel like, I feel like if you, if you allow your kids the opportunity to make the choice, then that's all you can do. Um, but yeah, I mean, now everything, I mean, you see it, you know, at the higher levels too, everything is so specialized. Uh, you know, I think, 
all kids, if you, if you play baseball, all kids should play, have an opportunity to play all positions. Um, you know, if, if, you know, and then you see, you see that too now where you've got 11, 12 year olds that are just pitchers. They don't hit, they don't do anything like that. Like you got plenty of time for that and later in your life to decide. I think everybody should hit, everybody should play, um, and let kids just be kids. And then, you know, as they get older into high school, into college now, okay, let's, let's start picking and choosing, spending a little bit more time on, on, you know, like I said, the possibility of maybe getting into college or maybe moving on to the next level. Let's spend a little bit more time on that. And, you know, like the biggest thing, man, is I've always said, let kids be kids, let them play, let them have fun, stay out of the way. And, you know, you're not going to make a professional team at 11. You're not going to make, you're not going to get a college scholarship at 11. So let them be 11 year olds, let them be and, and, see what happens and, and let them just grow as whether it be an athlete or a musician or whatever it is, just let them grow, let them pick, pick and choose what they, what, what makes them happy. All right. That's going to wrap up the front nine, but don't go anywhere. We're going to be right back with the back nine and more from John Lester on golf with Jay Delsing. Hi, this is Peter Jacobson and you're listening to golf with Jay Delsing. If you have a car and you're struggling to get some protection for that car, let me recommend Vehicle Assurance. 1-866-341-9255 is their number. They have been in business for over 10 years and have a 30-day money-back guarantee, which is one of the reasons why they have over 1 million satisfied customers. They are known for their painless claims process and their premium vehicle protection. So whatever that car looks like, they can help you. You can find them at VehicleAssurance.com or call them again at 866-341-9255 for a free quote. Get the protection and the peace of mind you deserve. Thank you, St. Louis, for making the first annual Ascension Charity Classic presented by Emerson a record-breaking success. The golf was incredible, your enthusiasm unmatched, and the only thing that will last longer than the memories is the impact you've made on North St. Louis County charities. To our sponsors, volunteers, and fans, thank you for welcoming golf's greatest legends and bringing professional golf back to St. Louis with record attendance. See you next year at the Ascension Charity Classic. Hey, I know you've heard a lot about club fitting, but I need you to go visit my friends at Pro-Am Golf. They're a family-owned and operated golf discount shop in St. Louis that's been operating for over 40 years. They have a top quality fitter in CJ over there and a very qualified staff with the most up-to-date, state-of-the-art technology in the industry at all. They've got a really cool ball program coming that will help you fit your swing speed to the right ball. But most importantly, they have the lowest prices in town on this fitting. And you know what's really special? They take the price of the fitting and roll it into the new clubs that you purchase over there. So basically, the fitting costs you nothing. Visit Tom DeGrand. He's been in the business for over 40 years and a great guy. And they'll watch you hit balls in their simulator. So stop by and ask for the Delsing discount and they'll give you even more money off their already low price. That's Pro-Am Golf, a family-owned business here in St. Louis. I am sitting down this morning with Gideon Smith, who is the head golf professional at Quincy Country Club. Hey, Gideon, thanks for joining me. Thank you for having me. Hey, uh, so uh, Quincy Country Club is a real sleeper in the area. Uh, uh, congratulations on being the head golf professional there. And tell us what's going on with uh, some Northern Illinois golf. Well, uh, Quincy Country Club, you know, we're two hours north of the St. Louis area. Uh, it's a club that's been established uh, in 1898. Um, we're kind of unique in the sense that we're all bent grass up here in the north. So, uh, even though we're in the transition zone, uh, we still are able to have success with having the bent grass, uh, fairways, you know, obviously tees and greens. Oh my gosh, it, it it makes for a real challenge for your superintendent, doesn't it? Because, I mean, imagine trying to t- manage the, the green complex throughout the whole facility. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, anytime that you're dealing with a cool season grass um, that is probably two hours south of uh, where uh, it would thrive. Uh, They definitely have their hands full, and I can't imagine what it's like down in the St. Louis area with the courses that have the bent grass as well. 
Right. We know that St. Louis Country Club is one and Fox Run comes to mind another. But um, uh, so, um, Gideon, talk to us a little bit about what uh, our listeners might uh, not know that you have going on uh, that you're involved with. Because I know you have your um, the secretary of the Gateway uh, PGA Board of Directors and you're just involved in a lot of golf related things. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, you always love to give back to your section, but you know, the Quincy area is pretty rich in golf tradition. Uh, we've got quite a few good players that have come out of Quincy. Uh, DA Wybring, who played regular tour champions tour. We've have Luke Guthrie, uh, kind of on the corn Ferry tour. We've got a couple of kids who I think are starting to get ready to go to Q school that, uh, went through Quincy. So, uh, we're, really uh rich in golf tradition uh we enjoy playing golf up here as everybody does but uh, we've had great success uh i've enjoyed uh, my time working with the section and you know obviously uh stepping up and uh being elected as secretary i've had a great time with that and look forward to serving uh even more well we appreciate so one of the things that the spotlight i'm trying to do is is give folks an idea of someone like you who has these responsibilities as the head golf professional at Quincy Country Club and, and is also the secretary of our section of the board of directors. I mean, there's a lot that you guys, you men and women do that goes uh, kind of unnoticed behind the scenes. But I know you guys love the game and you're growing the game. And so it's all worth it. Absolutely. I mean, you know, uh, I think the biggest thing is uh, you're, you're working on your structuring your, your schedule to be able to uh, attend uh, meetings, uh, phone calls, a lot of phone calls now uh, that you're involved with, but it also comes down to having an amazing staff. And uh, I do have an amazing staff that allow for me to uh, head down to St. Louis uh, multiple times to go to meetings or whatnot. And also having a board uh, of directors at the club here who are behind me 100% in uh doing what we do for our section. This is Gideon Smith. He's a head golf professional at Quincy Country Club. He's also secretary of the Gateway PGA Board of Directors. And this was the Gateway Spotlight. Gideon, thanks for joining me. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. You've seen it and played it in bars over the past 30 years, and now you can bring Golden Tea to your home. Complete your basement or man cave with the popular arcade game, the ultimate virtual golfing experience. Over 80 courses, unique game modes, and you can even challenge a buddy in online tournaments. However you play, you will be the talk of your neighborhood. Visit home.goldentea.com to learn more. I want to give a shout out to my friend Colin Burnt over at the Dean team of Kirkwood. Folks, if you're looking for any sort of vehicle, I know it says Volkswagen of Kirkwood. Colin has a parking lot full of new and used cars. I was just over there the other day. I bought a used VW Passat for my daughter, Joe, who just totaled it in an accident. She texted me, by the way, and said, Dad, I tapped a car in front of me. She tapped it so so well that the car's totaled. Anyway... I talked to um, to Colin, and he is working out a new vehicle for us. But we went over and looked. There is a huge selection of cars over there. My buddy Pearlie that does the show with me had bought a used Toyota truck from Colin and just loved the service and loved the vehicle. Um, 314-966-0303. This is like dealing with family over there. These are great people. Colin's there. His right-hand person, Brandy, is there to, to do anything they can to get you in the vehicle you want. Give them a call today. We're halfway there. It's time for the Back Nine on Golf with Jay Delsing. The Back Nine is brought to you by Fogelbach Agency with Farmers Insurance. Oh, welcome back. Hey, this is Golf with Jay Delsing. Uh, Pearlie is with me. Brad Barnes, meet. He's taking good care of us here in our ESPN studios. We're headed to the back nine that's brought to you by the Fogelbach Agency with Farmers. 314-398-0101. If you need any type of insurance for your family, for your business, for any sort of product, call Ed. And he and his family will help you out today. All right, so we are going right back into the John Lester interview. I hope you enjoy it. Ground ball right side. Goldie there. A flip. Garcia there. 
Nine in a row for St. Louis. 11 games above the 500 mark. And win number 200 in the career of John Lester. John Lester is brought to you by Golden Tee. I want to talk a little bit about the um, the mental side of of the game, John, and how you can re- we can relate it back to golf. But let's touch a little bit on 2006 when, man, you had to have just such an odd, uh, scared feeling when you wound up, you know, having to deal with the cancer that you had to deal with. Yeah. Um... You know, obviously nobody wants to hear those words, uh, you know, brought to them or mentioned to them or anything like that. And, you know, especially at 22, um, you know, and then you add everything else that was going on in my life uh, to to that as well with, you know, getting called up, getting my first chance and all that. But, you know, and and I was very fortunate. I tell tell this to everybody that asked me about this. Um, I was very fortunate to meet the people that I met along the way and the doctors that I got to meet and the, the guys that took care of me, the organization I was in, um, because those, they, they eased my mind more so than I think anybody could. So, you know, the doctor comes in and tells me, Hey, you have, you know, uh, lymphoma and this is, you know, what it is and yada, yada, yada. And, you know, he basically said, at the end of all this, you know, my parents are there and I'm in a hospital bed and all this. And and at the end of it, he says, Hey, listen, if you had to pick a cancer, this is the cancer that you would pick because you know, the success rate, the cure rate, all this stuff is really high. Now I've been going in, you still, there's still the 3%, 4%, whatever that, you know, wasn't cured or whatever. So there's still that chance, but that's something I didn't really look at. I looked at, you know, he said that and I kind of tuned, everything else out and we went forward, you know, kind of the same as a game plan pitching, like, okay, what is my game plan going forward? What do I need to do? And then let's go attack it and get it done. Kind of one of those deals. Well, the Fred Hutchison Cancer Research Center in Seattle, they are the the folks I think that you're referring to as well as the Red Sox organization and did a, just did a great job. And I mean, I can't imagine just at the front door of your career having to deal with that, but it sure as hell didn't hold you back at all. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, there was also the, the people at Dana-Farber in, in Boston that I dealt with that were awesome. They got me started with everything, and then I went to Fred Hutch and finished up there in Seattle. Um, but, yeah, I mean, obviously, you know, I try to compare it to, you know, obviously it's not the same, and, and I have to watch my words on this, but – uh, the analogy that I use is, is you know, it, it's it's not like a cold. So you get a cold, you take Tylenol, you take Theraflu, you take whatever, and, and you know, you, you feel better. And you see how the, the medicine works through the day and the next day and so on. Well, with cancer, there's no um, feeling better. You know, like, so you, you get your you get your treatment, you feel like crap for however many days, and then you kind of recover for, Mine was every 21 days. So you recover for, you know, 16 days, 15 days, whatever it may be. And then you're back at it again. You know, you lose your hair, you lose weight. um, You feel tired all the time. So there's no real like, hey, I'm feeling better until you go and get a scan and find out, oh, is it gone or is it not? So there's a lot of unknowns, a lot of questions. Um, You know, one thing that really helped me with it was I, I had an outlet. I had fishing I had, you know, when I could work out, I would work out. When I could throw, I would throw. Um, you know, when I could play golf, I could play golf type thing where, you know, sometimes I would just get in the car and go drive, you know, but I wasn't going to sit in the house and feel sorry for myself or start questioning, hey, is this working? Um, so I would tell people that, um, that, that that's something that really helped me keep my mind off of, you know, were the drugs working? Am I going to get through this? Am I going to be ready for spring training? Um, you know, all these questions. And that, that really helped me kind of get through that whole kind of unknown period. Oh, my gosh. I I can't imagine. And then you and your wife started this Never Quit uh, uh, organization to support children with cancer. Talk a little bit about that because that doesn't get nearly enough play, and it really should. Yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. It's obviously really special to us. Um, you know, having the history that I had, and, and going through that and obviously meeting the doctors and seeing, 
you know, organizations like PCRF, Pediatric Cancer Research, um, that have helped people like me, uh, Anthony Rizzo, other guys that, um, you know, were young at kind of the beginning of their career, or even just kids in general. Um, so, you know, I got to see it firsthand. So my wife and I, we were like, well, we want to start something. We want to be a part of something uh, and, and try to give back. And, and I don't think the kids, the pediatric side of cancer doesn't really get talked about enough. It doesn't get brought up enough. And um, it really lacks support. It really lacks uh, research and technology and, and all the stuff that, that we need to not allow this to happen to our kids. And so we, we dove all in and, and, Luckily, I had some help along the way. Um, a guy named Rob Quish uh, actually helped us start this whole thing back in 2012. He approached me with his son who went through cancer and had this whole awesome idea about never quit. And we were sold. We wanted to be a part of it. And from 2012 till 2019, um, well, I mean, we did some stuff last year, but obviously with COVID, it was a little hard. But we 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 had kids out at uh, at all 30 ballparks. We got that done in 19. Um, we raised over, I think, over a million, million and a half dollars over that amount of time uh, for PCRF. And you know, I got to meet a lot of same thing as, as going through my treatment. I got to go. I got to meet a lot of cool people uh, in Chicago and around the country. Uh, you know that unfortunately we're going through some tough times, but hopefully we were able to put a smile on their face for just that little bit um, when they were able to come to some of these games. Just want to shift gears a little bit, John, and talk a little bit about the mental side of pitching. And I know you love the game of golf, and this is a golf show, so we want to kind of of segue into that. One of the things that used to drive me crazy, John, is if I would have one, one mental lapse, I never seem to ever get away with it. I'd always hit the thing in the bushes or hit it in the water or something like that. Every single time I let my mind just get away from me a little bit. And it's got to be similar to you on the mound, I would guess, because if one pitch or if you, you know, what what is that? I should just shut up and let you uh, talk about that. But are there similarities like that? Uh, I think so. Um, you know, I think this is this is – my theory on on why I, why pitchers I think are are good at, are good golfers is I think it's very similar to pitching where you know it, it's, you, you're not always you know just like what you said you, you have let's just say you throw 110 pitches in a game you're not going to be locked in for 110 pitches you're going to have a mental lapse you're going to have uh, a question should I throw this or is this the right pitch or whatever um, and I think there's ways to get around that. There's, there's, um, I'm trying to think of the words, but anyway, like what, what a guy told me a long time ago, he's like, you, you got to, and this, the reason why this came up was because the umpires, not necessarily pitching. I would get so frustrated with umpires that it would carry into the next pitch and then the next pitch and the next pitch. And next thing you know, I've walked a guy and now I've given up a hit and, and there's that mental lapse. So what he used to always harp on me is, you know, Hey, you gotta, you gotta win every single pitch. You gotta take one pitch at a time and win that pitch, whatever it may be. And if it doesn't go your way, you need to figure out a way to move on to the next pitch and win that pitch. And so he came up with this, this program for me with these cards and they're three by five cards and they've got number one, uh, zero, zero through 99 all jumbled up in there. And it's a five minute process and you go through and, you know, each one is different. The first one is, you know, from zero, zero up by two, you kind of get the idea. You have to, you have to try to find each number as an individual. And so that would really help me kind of hone in on each pitch. So I'm trying to find each number. So I'm going zero, zero. Okay. Where's two. Now I got to find two and you got to do that within a minute. Um, and then you have other ones that have distractions in them and the other ones are silent. So you have to kind of play this game with yourself and really focus. Um, so that was something that really helped me uh, with with the pitch-to-pitch of the game. Um, and I think that helps with golf because it's very similar, right? Right? You hit a bad shot, that's your, that's your pitch. Now you have to try to focus on the uh, – of accomplishing or winning the next shot or winning the next pitch. Um, 
so yeah, I mean, it's it's very. I think it's very similar. Um, I think golf is way more of a mental because um, it is just you. It's way more of a mental grind battle uh, out there than when you're say you're pitching because I have, you know, I got seven other guys behind me that when I screw up, they're hopefully running it down or making a dive and play or, you know, doing whatever. Whereas golf, you screw up, it's magnified. It's you, it's not, you know, not anybody else. Nobody else swung the club for you. So a little bit different, but I think very similar uh, kind of mindsets that you have to take from shot to shot. And that's going to wrap up the back nine, but don't go anywhere. We have the 19th hole and just a little bit more John Lester on golf with Jay Delsing. Marcon Appliance Parts Company needs to recognize the sponsors, staff, and volunteers who made the inaugural Ascension Charity Classic in St. Louis a huge success. Without the tireless effort of hundreds of dedicated people this past year, this PGA Champions Tour event could not have achieved the success it did. The winner in golf is the person with the lowest score. But the big winner of this event is the people and communities of need in the St. Louis area and the tremendous boost to the St. Louis economy as a whole. Well played by everyone who put in the time to make this a wonderful event. It's great to live in your community. Marcon Appliance Parts Company is based in St. Louis, Missouri, and is the largest distributor of major appliance parts in North America, and a proud distributor of General Electric Parts. Hey guys, I know you've heard golf is booming, and it really is. There are more people playing golf today than ever before. And you know who else is doing great? My friends at Whitmore Country Club. I don't know if you know about their membership, but if you join at Whitmore Country Club, there's 90 holes. They give you access to the links of Dardeen, the Golf Club of Wentzville, and the Missouri Bluffs. And the cart fees are included in the membership, so you're not going to get dinged for a cart fee. There's no food or beverage minimums, no assessments, no nothing. Just great golf, great places to eat. They have a large pool complex, three tennis courts. They've got a kids' club. You can drop your children off, you and your significant other. Your wife can go out, play a little golf. You can call them at 636-926-9622. And when you go over there, poke your head in the golf shop and say hi to my friend Bummer. He is terrific. He wants to help you with your game, and he'll show you around. Thank you, St. Louis, for making the first annual Ascension Charity Classic presented by Emerson a record-breaking success. The golf was incredible, your enthusiasm unmatched, and the only thing that will last longer than the memories is the impact you've made on North St. Louis County charities. To our sponsors, volunteers, and fans, thank you for welcoming golf's greatest legends and bringing professional golf back to St. Louis with record attendance. See you next year at the Ascension Charity Classic. Hey, Jay Delsing here for SSM Health Physical Therapy. Do you want to have a more consistent golf swing? Hell, I know I sure do. SSM Health Physical Therapy's golf program has Titleist Performance Institute certified physical therapists trained to assess your movement patterns, your mobility, and your stability to help make your golf swing more efficient and repeatable. They can help your golf game. There's 80 locations in the St. Louis area, 800-518-1626, or visit them on the web at SSMPhysicalTherapy.com. Tell them Jay sent you for special pricing. Your therapy, our passion. Let your local farmer's insurance agent, Ed Fogelbach, put his experience to work for you. Ed Fogelbach proudly serves St. Louis area families and businesses and is ready to review your existing policies or provide a no-obligation quote today. Call the Fogelbach Agency at 314-398-0101 to get smarter about your insurance. Again, that's the Fogelbach Agency at 314 314- Three nine eight zero one zero one. We know a thing or two because we've seen a thing or two. We are farmers. Bum, 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 bum. I am with my buddy Joe Sheezer from USA Mortgage. Hi, Jay. How are you? Doing great, Joe. Thanks so much for the support of the show. Ah, I really appreciate the opportunity. Uh, congratulations. This is uh, your third year, and we're really proud to be a sponsor all three years since the very beginning. It's a great show, and we look forward to it every Sunday morning. Well, thanks a bunch. Tell us just a little bit about USA Mortgage and what you can do for people. Well, USA Mortgage is a uh, ESOP. It's an employee-owned company. So over a 1,000 families here in St. Louis work for the company. So if you want an opportunity to patronize a, a local company, please call USA Mortgage, 314-628-2015, and I'll be more than happy to sit down with you, go over your options, discuss all the different programs that are available, and give you an opportunity to support a local company. 
That's awesome, Joe. Thanks so much. Appreciate it, Jay. Thank you. Grab your friends, a cold one, and pull up a chair. We're on to the 19th hole on golf with Jay Delsing. The 19th hole is brought to you by Pro-Am Golf. Hey, welcome back. This is Golf with Jay Delsing. I'm your host, Jay. Pearlie is with me, and we are headed to the 19th hole, which is brought to you by our friends over at Pro-Am Golf. You and I are getting fitted over there very, very soon, maybe even in the next couple days. That would be fantastic. I need it bad. Absolutely. We both do. And they are a great company. 314-647-8054. First of all, they have all state-of-the-art equipment and all of the major technologies that we need, but they have the lowest prices on their fitting. And if you buy something from them, they just roll the price of the fitting right into the club, so it's like the fitting's free. Plus, you said they absolutely know what they're doing. I appreciate all the technology and yep. stuff, and that's important, but you still need a guy that knows his stuff. Absolutely. Absolutely. So they got CJ over there. He's terrific. You can ask for the Delsing discount, and you're going to get a little more money off of that already low price. All right, so we got to jump right back into just the finish of the John Lester interview. Uh, here it is, folks. One ball, two strikes, two outs, ninth inning. Glasgow strikes out! John Lester's thrown a no-hitter at Fenway! John Lester is brought to you by Golden Tee. John, one of the hardest things for me was when I'm in the middle of contention and trying to win a tournament and hit a bad shot. The time, my my internal clock wanted to speed up, and then more adrenaline gets kicked in. And, you know, when I was younger, I was like, damn, I'm all fired up now. You know, and then I could hit this 9-iron 170 instead of, you know, basically 150 and things and then they happen to make decisions on where do I drop this ball how do I do it all things like that did you experience stuff like that on the mound too where maybe you made a great pitch and you just got beat by a little dinker you know out to right field or something yeah um I mean yeah it's 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 all the same I mean I think one of the things and this resonated with me uh for a long time I heard a, a while ago you know, Mike Tyson said, everybody has a game plan until you get hit in the mouth, right? So <laughs> I think right. that really applies to pitching where, yeah, I got a game plan until, you know, lack of a better term, shit hits the fan. You know, like, okay, I got, I got, I know what I'm doing, I know what I'm doing. Now I'm second and third with one out. I got to figure out, we got a one-run lead. I got to figure out how to get out of this without giving up the lead. And then you give up the lead. Now it's about how you come back from that. And like I said, I think, Pitching is a little bit different than golf where where if I give up that lead, I still have my team to hopefully, you know, pick me up. So there's still like that hope where, you know, golf, it's so deflating when you do screw up, you know, and it's like, like I said, you, there's nobody else but you. So you just keep the whole way up to your ball after you hit it in the water, you're, you're beating yourself up. And like you said, you're talking about, well, where I got to drop it, where I got to do, am I doing this right? Am I doing that wrong? And like I said, in baseball, I feel like you have the ability to come back after giving up the lead. You know, say that happened in the third inning. Now, all of a sudden, I'm pitching the sixth and seventh inning, and I've kind of redeemed myself um, for that time. So I think, you know, that baseball can be maybe a little bit more forgiving than, than golf can. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I think I think you can judge a lot by a guy that – and, and this, this is a – I think this is a cool story um, – so I'm in Boston early in my career. I think it was like 07, 08. Um, Kurt Schilling was there. Beckett was there. And Beckett was was kind of big into my career as far as helping me get better. And Schill was, you know, the veteran guy that did his thing. And he had, he had some stuff for me here and there, but, you know, kind of more or less just pitched and did his deal. Um, first inning, I go out and give up four runs. Just boom, just like that. We're down four nothing in the top of the first. And, you know, there was a buzz in the park. Now there's not, you know, I'm kind of deflated out there. I come in the dugout and I'm pissed and I'm throwing my stuff and I'm sitting down. We get, uh, we get one out guy on, we score two runs. So now it's four, two in the first going back out for the second. She'll comes down as I'm putting my hat and my, getting my glove on. He looks me dead in the eye. He goes, that's all they get. You keep them there. We win the game. It's zero zero. Go back. Like, let's go. Kind of one of those, like, young guy, pump me back up type deals. And I ended up going out and pitching really well. 
And I think we ended up coming back and winning the game. But that just like really resonated with me where we, we were down for nothing. And now I got a guy, you know, in my face saying, Hey, look, it's zero, zero. Like, let's go clean the slate. Give us a chance to win. And so I think that for me really resonated is okay. I screwed up the first, but now I kind of redeemed myself. I, I got punched in the mouth. We, we made an adjustment. And now I ended up pitching the game and we got a W and that's the ultimate goal. Um, so that was kind of like a, one of those stories along the way that, that really helped me when those, when those bad times kind of hit early in the games. Yeah. There's something about having those teammates that can kind of help you, uh, you know, when, when you need a little boost or a kick in the butt or something like that is, is really something. John, did you do anything special? Your big game, um, prowess was just i mean that's one of the reasons we didn't like you here in st louis because you were always pitching game (laughs) seven and whipping our ass but did you did did you do anything to focus more did you do or or what i would tell people is the great athletes know how to get themselves to relax so that they can get in that space where they perform their best i think that's part of it um i think because of of Early in my career, I had a Bob Tewksbury and, and Donnie Cockstein, who were uh, two great mental skills coaches that I, I got to run into and be a part of uh, kind of their tutelage uh, early in my career. And I had some minor league coaches that always really harped on routine. And as a starting pitcher, you have, you know, four days in between your starts where you, you need to have a routine. And then that leads into your start day. And you know, like I said earlier, when I was younger, I'd show up two hours before, put my uniform on, run out there, throw my bullpen, go pitch. There's really no routine involved there. Um, and as I got into the game and more more comfortable around the game, I developed these routines of, okay, day after I pitch, I do this. The day after that, you do that, and so forth and so forth. And then when you get into the to your start day, you show up. You know, I eat the same thing the day I pitch. Um, I show up at the same time. If you know if it's a seven o'clock game, uh, or I, sh- I show up the the hours before the same time, uh, whether it's a day game or a night game, um, you know I do the same stuff when I get there. I'd have my routine where I go and I do this, and then I'd go do my cards, and then I'd take like a little twenty minute nap or just a rest time. Then now I'm going into stretch. So the long winded side of that is, I feel like when you have something to fall back on in big games or in pressure situations to relax your mind. I think that's when you go into the game knowing, okay, I've done everything that I can to be ready for this game, regardless if it's game one of the season, game 60 of the season, game seven of the world series, whatever it is, I've done everything to prepare for this start or to prepare for this situation. Now it's just about trying to execute. And I feel like when you clear your mind of kind of all the worries of, you know, am I prepared or don't screw up or all this stuff, you clear your mind of that. And then now you're focused on, okay, I got to, I'm throwing this fastball down and away to this guy, or I'm throwing this cutter into this guy. So now I'm pitch to pitch. And now I'm focused on that as opposed to, well, I skipped my leg workout this week because I was just being lazy. I'm not really prepared for the start. I start questioning this, you know, stuff like that. So I feel like that routine that was hammered into me, at such an early age prepared me for bigger games. Um, And then I honestly think one of the other reasons that, that really helped me early is, you know, I'm 23 years old and I'm pitching game four of the world series for the Red Sox with the potential of sweeping the Rockies and I'm starting the game. And, And I got to go kind of pitch with no expectations of winning that game you know, kind of the outside, you know, they're like, well, hopefully he just gives us a good start and we can get to Beckett game five and then we'll definitely win that game, you know, kind of one of those. So I think having that uh, experience early in my career had then helped me, you know, go forward um, into some of these other games as I got older. All right. So Pearl, Okay, so first of all, I loved what he said. Same thing as Jack Nicholson. said. Don't let your kids focus on one damn sport their whole time. Let them play a bunch of different sports for the season. 
How, how do we get that message out in a big way? I'm down in Texas with my grandkids, love the grandkids. They're soccer fanatics, but they're doing the thing that Jack and John say not to do. I know. And I, I talk to the parents, my daughter and son-in-law. I, I can't get through to them. They look at me like, no, not like. They're like, you're old. Yep. You don't understand. Right. No, I think I do understand, and I happen to be getting to talk and be around some of the goats and, and greatest players in different sports, and they're saying the same thing. It's a mistake. Plus, Jay, I see the attitudes. I see the the way those kids are carrying themselves. If you were to the level of passion and interest and having fun, they wouldn't be doing the things they're doing on the field a lot no of doubt, times. John. No doubt. And they get so, they're they're forced to get so invested when they're not really, they shouldn't even be that, that they shouldn't even know what's important. They should just be chasing a ball around. And they should be chasing a bunch of different balls around the soccer ball. And then, great. And then go play some hoops. And then go do something else. I mean, that's what they need to do. But the, the other thing about the Lester uh, interview that I just loved was listening. First of all, think about this. They just call you up and you get cancer. I mean, I don't want to think about that. That's that that has to be like you're getting hit with a two by four or the proverbial bus. A- absolutely. But what about some of the the mental prep things that he did to get himself ready um, for the big games? And this dude's won over 200 games. He's, I, I gotta believe he's gonna be a Hall of Famer. And he, br- I said to him, and I, I've said this on air. I'm like, dude, I don't want to like you because you absolutely spanked the Cardinals and. World Series is with the Red Sox, and then you guys went in the Cubs. You know, that just kind of rubs us all the wrong way in St. Louis, and uh, and he just laughed. But, um, man, alive, he um, he said he had so much hate and respect for the Cardinals, and not hate in the certain terms, but just love to compete against them because he knew when you were going to compete against the Cardinals, you were going to go up against a, a, a great organization and a team that was going to work hard. Well, the thing that stuck out for me was his routine, and he talked about the routine a lot. You and I know that now, finally, right, in, in our age, not just for our golf games, but for life, for really whatever we're doing. Uh, I love that he you know, quoted the Mike Tyson, you know, it's a great plan, or you have a plan until you get hit in the mouth. Let me tell you something. If you do have a great plan, and you do have a routine, and you do get hit in the mouth, because, by the way, you're going to get hit in the mouth, and you should know you're going to get hit in the mouth, you're going to be okay. But if you don't have that great routine, you don't have a plan. So the, 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 the idea behind that Mike Tyson quote is not to not have a plan. It's to realize you're going to get hit in the mouth, and then we'll see how good it is. But right. also stick with it. Bro, it goes back to having something to fall back on. When you get knocked down, what helps you get back up? If you don't have that stubbornness, that uh, big-time desire to succeed, that that overriding sense that the fear is not going to win, a lot of the things that you talk, you know, you heard Michael Je- uh, Jordan talk about. Um, I wasn't. I wasn't going. To, I wasn't going to have that feeling anymore. That feeling of what it felt like to be cut from my high school freshman basketball team and things like that. The, these guys, they're so similar, John. Some of their motivational techniques and what they use. And I love how he started talking about the sports psych side of it. It's and a then big we deal. related that to golf, and it's so similar. It's such a big deal, and we need it. Every, everybody needs it. You know, we always talk about how do we integrate your golf show to business and other sports and things like that. I'll tell you one way is, is that mental prep. And I don't care if you're a CEO or you're a basketball player or a hockey player or trying to get through college uh, grades. That, that, that prep, that routine, that type of stuff. And by the way, it's no more fancy than that. Uh, there can be very interesting, fancy uh, efforts within that, but it's still the basic foundational of a routine, sticking to a plan, sticking to that routine for uh, quite a while, and then identifying certain exercises to get you over the hump uh, as you go. That's as fancy as it gets, but you know what? They're, that's hard to do consistently, real no, hard. It, it, it really is. It takes a tremendous amount of discipline. And one of the things that I loved, and then we got to wrap this up, but one of the things I loved is I said, what did you do to get up for these big games? How did you do that? And he said, I just made sure that I covered my bases and all of my prep and all of my routines and all the things. And he's like, I couldn't do anything more. Now just get back and see what I got. I tell my grandson, everybody wants to win on game day. Who wants to win the day before, the week before, the month before, six months before? He wants to go play in Europe. Who wants to 
uh, play in Europe and show it when they're 14 years old that they're going to be there when they're 19. Everybody when they're 19 that still plays wants to go, but the guy that started when he's 14 has a half a chance or a quarter of a chance or an inkling of a chance. Right. Absolutely. Well, Pearl, that's going to wrap up another show. I hope you enjoyed that John Lester interview as much as I did. Thanks for being here with me. And Meet, thanks for taking care of us here. And we will be back next week with more of Golf with Jay Delsing. Hit him straight, St. Louis.